the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, we are gathered once more to celebrate the sacrifice of the Mass, to thank God for His love and mercy over our lives, and to commit to Him our needs, especially for that of our country, praying that we may have healing of our land and justice and peace. And to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us acknowledge our sins and ask God for mercy and pardon. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O 
O God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy, for on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. In those days, Judah went up to Joseph and said, O oh my Lord, let your servant, I beg you, speak a word in my lost ears, and let not your anger burn against your servant, for you are like Pharaoh himself. My Lord asked his servant, saying, Have you a father or a brother? And we said to my Lord, We have a father, an old man, and a young brother, the child of his old age, and his brother is dead, and he alone is left of his mother's children, and his father loves him. Then you say to your servants, Bring him down to me, that I may set my eyes upon him. Unless your youngest brother comes down with you, you shall see my face no more. When we went back to your servant, my father, we told him the words of my Lord. And when our father said, Go again, buy us a little food. We said, we cannot go down. If our youngest brother goes with us, then we shall go down. For we cannot see the man's face unless our youngest brother is with us. Then your servant, my father, said to us, you know that my wife bore me two sons. One left me, and I said, Surely he has been torn to pieces, and I have never seen him since. If you take this one also from me, and harm befalls me, you will bring down my gray hairs in sorrow to Sheol. Then Joseph could not control himself before all those who stood by him. And he cried, Make everyone go out from me. So no one stayed with him. When Joseph made himself known to his brothers, and he wept aloud so that the Egyptians heard it, and the household of Pharaoh heard it, and Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him, for they were dismayed at his presence. So Joseph said to his brothers, Come near to me, I beg you. And they came near. And he said, I am your brother, Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now, do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve your life. The word of the Lord.
Remember the wonders the Lord has done. Remember the wonders the Lord has done. called them a famine on the land. He broke their staff of bread. He has sent a man ahead of them. Joseph sold as his slave. His feet were weighed down in chains. His neck was bound with iron until what he said came to pass, and the word of the Lord broke him through. Then the king sent orders and released him. The ruler of the peoples set him free. He made him master of his house and ruler of all his possessions. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, Preach as you go, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse lepers, cast out demons. You received without pay, give without pay. Take no gold nor silver, no, no copper in your belts, no bag for your journey, no two tunics, no sandals, no a staff, for the laborer deserves his food. And whatever town or village you enter, find out who is worthy in it and stay with him until you depart. As you enter the house, salute it. And if the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, 
let your peace return to you. And if anyone will not receive you or listen to your words, shake off the dust from your feet as you leave that house or town. Truly, I say to you, it shall be more tolerable on the day of judgment for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah than for that town. The Gospel of the Lord. Beloved brothers and sisters in Christ, we thank God for bringing us together this day to participate in this Mass. We also are privileged to have the Lord talk to us through the Scriptures. And here in the Gospel reading, we see the Lord reminding us of the mission that he has entrusted to the church and indeed to all the faithful. He gave this command to his apostles to go and declare that his kingdom is here. To bring healing to those who are sick and to also raise the dead, cleanse lepers, cast out demons as a task that they must continue to do out of love for the people they are sent to minister to. So the church, through the sacraments, continues this healing work of Jesus, the sacrament of the Eucharist, the sacrament of reconciliation, the church continues to bring people closer to him and to bring those who have sinned back to wholeness. It's also a place in the church for every one of us to receive hope those who are perhaps downcast because of the situations they encounter each day. This day in our country, we are all experiencing some form of disappointment or the other. But the Lord reminds us today that we too can rise from our moments that feel as though we are already dead. Some person may be walking with their eyes open as it were, but right within them, they are almost as good as dead because they don't seem to find hope anymore. They don't trust anyone anymore. They don't trust the government. They don't trust their neighbor. They don't even know if they would wake up the next day and see another day. So the church continues to remind us that in spite of our challenges, we should look up to the Lord Jesus and as we listen to his words in the scriptures, renew our faith in him. Rise up and continue to move that he is with us. And that each one of us, beginning from those of us who are called the ministerial priesthood, have been given a task to go out and show love to anyone we meet, to remind them that God loves them, to support them in their various needs of life. Some who cannot pick up their bills, if the Lord has blessed us, should be able to help them. Those who are in the hospitals, who cannot 
pet themselves, to be able to visit them, to be able to tell them that God is still there with them. We may not be, you know, called like the priests to go and anoint, but we all have a duty to show some love to everyone. And that's what the Lord reminds us today. And he reminds us too that we have received freely. Whatever we have in life comes from him. And so we should also give without demanding anything in return. We should always realize that whatever opportunity we have, he has given it to us. Whatever influence we have, whatever you know, opportunities that have come our way, we should not behave as if it is by simply our efforts. We should be ready to share with others. We should be ready to look out for those who need our support and be ready to give it to them. And today, the Lord also reminds us that we should learn to be detached Learn not to travel with so much. Interestingly, when we become the disciples of Jesus through baptism, he does not assure us that we're going to become rich men and rich women overnight, or that you know, following him guarantees some kind of um, security that you, know, you find others assuring, maybe, um, financial security, some economic, uh, you know, breakthrough. It doesn't seem to declare in that sense of the material. But he assures us that he will take care of us. We don't need to be afraid of what, how our next meal will come if we are doing our best. He will provide for us. But he also wants us to be careful not to put the love for wealth at, you know, as though it is what matters the most in life. He wants us to learn to travel light, to live simply that others may simply live. To be ready to allow the Lord use us without asking for conditions. As priests, we obviously have been reminded, of course, when we are ordained that it's part of the call. Any day you are called to move, you move. Wherever you are sent, no matter how difficult the terrain may be, you move. What should be primary you know, goal for us should be to reach out to the people where they are. But every one of us is part of that mission because you also, every one of us by baptism is commissioned to do the same. And we can only do as much when we learn to reduce so much attachment and emphasis on material things that our own generations seem to be so much engrossed in. The Lord also wants us to be people who go about preaching the message of peace. He says sometimes when you go, people may reject you, but do not be discouraged. Still be peacemakers. And to be peacemaker demands that we understand that the Lord himself, whom we are his disciples, also faced criticism, also faced rejection, faced torture and death on the cross. So we must be ready to have our own share of the cross, but we should not give to it, to that. We should not say, oh, I will have my own pound of flesh. That is what Joseph gives us as an example in the first reading. 
his brothers offended him. His brothers gave him reason to be very angry with them and even be ready to pay them back with the same coin. But he rather chose to forgive. That's the model for us. And that's the model of our Lord Jesus Christ. We should be peacemakers. Sometimes we demand justice, but justice does not come when we also begin to insist that we will have our way. We should be ready, like the Lord, to say, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And when following him demands that we lay down our lives, may we not be afraid to do so. And we are assured that he will never abandon us. So whatever challenge we may be having, maybe there are people we are nursing some anger towards them. Maybe there are persons who have done things to us, we don't want to see them anymore. We ask the Lord for grace because it's not easy to forgive. It's not easy to let go. In our families, in our workplace, our friends may have done things to us. We feel like they don't deserve to be close to us anymore. It's an opportunity to say, Lord, as we participate in this Mass, give us the grace to be like you, to go wherever you send us, including to those who have offended us. And may we owe them nothing but love and kindness and forgiveness. That is what he demands of us. May that be our goal always, through Christ our Lord. sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this oblation, dedicated to your name, purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven. 
Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him, with great goodness, you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all the saints with one who had blessed you. Therefore, we too extol you with all the angels, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, let it you fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring out the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Ignatius, our Bishop, Anselm, the auxiliary Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember the intentions of this Mass and those who sincerely promise to pray for. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all we pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Apostles, and all the saints who are pleased throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through Christ our Lord.
Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, to await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you through Christ our Lord. participate in this Mass and actively as well. The choir, thank you, and uh, lectures and the entire parishioners, thank you for coming. We know that it is what we have to do for evangelization and through the Catholic television we reach people in various homes and also beyond uh, the country. I mean the, the Catholic television would always need our, our support and the communications department as well of our Archdiocese. We want to welcome Father Gabriel Itachi uh, my good friend and brother who is here and who is uh, walking there in the 
at least in addition. Yeah. The most welcome Father and the entire crew of the Catholic Television. We pray that we'll continue to grow from height to height and that we will all be able to do more for God and for his church. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. good thing that uh, you, you we have this platform to be able to have the mass aired for those who would be at home and who would watch it including parishioners who have the opportunity to watch and um, the various uh, places where this will reach so is a is my joy that we're participating in this uh, uh, mission of the archdiocese and that we are able to also uh, give what we can to the glory of God. I am well pleased today. This is a way of spreading the gospel of Christ. And I give kudos to the Archdiocese for this. I will do my own contribution for them to continue spreading this good news by because this is a channel that when people watch, their spirit is being lifted up. Even people that don't even have the time to come to church, but once in a while, they view the channel. It's a, uh, um, a, a beautiful um, thing that is happening, and um, we will continue to encourage the, the staff to you know, continue to put in their best into this. And uh, we are looking forward to, uh, you know, that this will keep growing, you know, towards um, what will be, you know, more global than we have. <laughs> watching CTV.